Luna said to me the other day, she goes, Hey dad, I like you. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, I love that too. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. That's from Daniel Tiger. That's I like when pe- when they'll just, you're sitting there doing something and they'll just kind of crawl up next to you and just lean on you. Yeah. That's the best. That is the best. Yeah. Yeah. Your teenagers probably don't do that anymore, do they? Um, a little bit. Oh, well, that's not, nice. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, it's, it's so funny because they're they're always very, uh, like religious about saying good night. We have kind of like a good night routine. Oh, they okay. always like come in and give me a kiss and a hug and then say good night every night. Oh, which I don't. Know, I really like that. Yeah, and they're fourteen. They're fifteen. Oh man, Brady does that. It's kind of annoying. Yeah, Brady does it, and he's. <laughs> Dad, you come tuck me in. You don't want. You don't I don't. Like it. I don't tuck them in, but they come to me. I'm in my bed. Okay. And I so have to go upstairs and say goodnight. There. You sound like That's the amazing. biggest jerky father. You don't want to say goodnight to your son. I could. I could say it right now. <laughs> I've got to. You have to be in bed to accept my goodnight. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> That's what it is. Like, yes, I'll give you a hug. Yeah. But he's like, we come upstairs and say goodnight. And do you do it? Yes. Okay. Well, at least you oh, do okay. it. Okay. Yeah. We we'll right. do it. Well, well that's better than me because I don't, I don't get out of my bed. I, I don't they, know come, they come to me. I don't know if that's the best <laughs> introduction to Gary being on the podcast. Yeah. Welcome to Gary, the <laughs> jerkiest, <laughs> the un- most ungrateful dad else. in America. <laughs> <laughs> My well, teenage kids want to be around me. It's so stupid. But but what if your daughter does? Got it? crap to do. Like because she's ten, eleven. She's eleven. Yeah. If she said it, would it be different? She doesn't say it. <laughs> and that's why I love her. Oh, well, Brady's. No, she so, kicks me out of the room. She, yeah. She's so always sitting reading, and she's like, "We leave." Amazing. <laughs> oh, man. So is Ginger, or is she more like Ginger then? Uh, and I'm sorry, more like you, and then and then Brady is more like, like Ginger, a little bit no, more, a little softer, a little more tender-hearted. No, Jenny is probably more like me, and Brady's. Well, I don't. know. Ginger's not. She's, she's not. She's not like affectionate, that. really, or like. It's funny because I think you are affectionate. Yeah, my kids still come and like sit on me, almost on the couch. Okay. My yeah. boys. Yeah. Jenny. Not so much. Not, as often, but the boys will, like Brady will like sit right in my space. Yeah, and do do get off. Yeah, I'm, I'm just like, it's cool. They like yeah, me. bud. Yeah. Okay, I like Brady. I yeah. like that. I like it too. All right. Well. Also, I like that uh, we gave you a mic, but did not put the camera on you. No. So people would be they could be looking at a lot of just our face, just listening, listening to you. To, <laughs> just watch us listen. What's the most? Somebody else. Isn't what's that some, riveting? <laughs> what's the most awkward? <laughs> Chris, what's oh, the most no. awkward situation you've ever been no, in? No, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should change the theme to kids. No. We love our kids. I love our kids. Yeah. Uh, you were asking me, though, about most embarrassing moments. What's the most embarrassing moment of yeah. your life? Okay. I got one for this. This was, um, we were doing uh, these Christmas shows at our church. Uh, thousands of people came through. It was highlight of my year. It was so, it was so fun. And this year I was, uh, with another one of our friends, Andrew Dale, uh, we were performing as clowns. Yeah. And we were doing this routine where we would pull somebody out of the audience. We should point out like kind of like Cirque de Soleil. Yeah. It, there clowns, was Cirque, not birthday party clowns. Right. Yeah. It was yeah. like more like Cirque du Soleil, um, you know, inspired. We yeah. are by no means, you know, performers of that caliber, especially when it comes to, to clowning. You didn't need and to say the, that. People know. That's true. Everyone already knew that. Uh, but we did this bit where we, we you know, uh, Andrew picks a, a lady out of the audience and is smitten. And so they go on like this date and it's this little funny thing. And then I come out as the waiter on the date and I'm smitten as well. And I put on some very white music and I do this little dance little sexy dance little sexy dance um, you know and a clown doing a sexy dance it's hilarious yeah big butt big butt you know it was fun well so opening night very first show and Andrew goes out into the audience and I'm watching on a monitor backstage 
you know, I can see who he picks and how it's going and all this kind of stuff. So I know my cue when to when to run out on the stage. He picks this blonde headed young lady, uh, and she part of the gag is he you know, basically calls her out of the audience. She stands up and walks out to the aisle where he's standing. She stands up and starts walking to the aisle, and I'm just all of a sudden getting a really sick feeling because I'm like, wait a second. She looks pretty young. <laughs> it's like, what? Who did he pick? What is this? What is this? She comes into the light, and it's like, oh my gosh, this is like a 12 year old girl. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm freaking out. Backstage. Obviously, you want this to be appropriate. An appropriately an appro- aged woman. I mean, an appropriately aged woman. And I'm thinking, I just immediately I'm like going, like thinking, what the heck is Andrew thinking? Like, why would he pick someone so young? Anyways, they go through the whole bit, do the whole thing. And I'm just going like, do I go out there? Should I actually do this? Like, is this just going to be wildly crazy? You know, it's so weird and inappropriate. Or weird. It, it, Finally, I just thought, I'm just going to do it. I think everybody will understand it's a joke. You know, and and I'm you know I'm wearing this clown outfit, whatever. So I go out there, and right before I went on the stage, I went out on stage. I just said, "Here goes nothing." <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like I was just losing it backstage. I'm really, I'm actually embarrassed at how I, I how I reacted backstage because I was so freaked out. I was just like, "What am I? What am I supposed to do?" Like I'm literally going like, "What am I supposed to do?" And I just finally had to just go. I'll just do it. And I did it, and it was fine. You know, a few people after was like, she was kind of young. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit odd. That was a little weird. Maybe a and note. so I'm like, Andrew, what the heck are you, th- like, why did you? And he's like, it was dark. I couldn't tell. She looked like she was much older. <laughs> 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 so we, thankfully, I, I don't know, if Andrew, just, I think we decided after that night to go, okay, let's pick a person before together this, yeah before or just before <laughs> while we can make sure we see oh yeah okay and, and then kind of know where she's sitting and then you know make sure she's of age yeah Ugh, but i was mortified like i just remember thinking like oh i hope this is not taken the wrong way it's pretty good there it is welcome to the podcast the, yes welcome to the podcast Good to see all of you, wonderful people. Thank you for taking time out of your day to listen to us talk. Uh, I'll do a proper intro. I didn't do one last time. You didn't. Welcome to the podcast, Adam Bush, Chris Munch. And behind, you can hear him, but you can't see him. Oh. Our best bud, Gary Hornstein. Garbo. We get, he's he's keeps talking during the podcast that we gave him a mic. Had to give him a mic. Yeah, had to Wouldn't give him a shut mic. Shut up. Yeah, you'll never see him. I'm going to talk more with the mic in front of me. Yeah. You're probably going to see him here pretty soon. Um, we're, uh, this is a podcast about uh, a couple of guys and their buddy <laughs> <laughs> who risked it for the biscuit. Risk it for the biscuit. We, all of us actually, we, uh, Chris and I, we worked at a church for a long time. Chris, 22 years. Mm-hmm. And uh, over the last couple of years, uh, we both made a decision independently and together mm. to uh, leave our jobs and pursue careers in entertainment. That's right. And as performers so i'm a stand-up comedian and a writer and christopher is an actor yeah and a stand-up uh, yeah right yeah we do a lot of shows together yeah we do and uh, gary also he said i love adam and chris so much i will also quit my job so he also quit his job <laughs> and he helps us fulfill our dreams yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's what he said that's all he wants to do he was just like if i can be there for you. it's really selfless buddy yeah yeah amazing everybody needs one not sure what his family's gonna do no um, they've got no money and we're not supporting them no we're not i got enough it. trouble trying to support my own family <laughs> yeah so this podcast follows our journey and uh every episode we uh tell a story pick a theme and uh today we're gonna we got a story and we got a theme and then we're gonna do some uh, uh comments of the week at Comment the end of the week yeah and that's what's happening today. So welcome to the podcast. Uh, I have a story about being embarrassed. Okay. Um, so if you if you watch my special, you can hear the story of uh, going to jail where mm. I accidentally took a knife to the airport. Yes. And my dad had to bail me out. Of course. Who could forget? And um, what a lot of people don't know, that is the first time I went to jail. Okay. 
The second time was uh, I was a, I was a, I was newly married, and uh, I was uh, I was working at a church okay. at the church that we worked at, and that church used to have a camp, and so a bunch of us are driving out to uh, this camp to put on the service, and we get pulled over for speeding, and the cop says. And the thing was, um, my license was expired, mm. and I didn't have it. That's a pretty normal thing I did pre-marriage. Like oh, I was just right. pretty irresponsible. Yeah. Like r- regularly, I would drive with a like a, an expired license mm. because my license was expired. I also didn't have insurance. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so cop goes, uh, "Yeah, you're getting some tickets." He doesn't take me to jail. Mm. He says, "But you got to go to court." So um, a couple weeks later, I go to court, and the judge is so kind to me. Mm. She says, I like what you guys do at that camp, and uh, if you'll just get this all fixed, get a license, mm-hmm. right? because <laughs> I'm a 30-year-old man. Get insurance. Get insurance. Yeah. Up to date, I will uh, dismiss this charge. Yeah. And I was like, thank you so much. Really appreciate that. So I left that day and totally forgot that she told me to do those oh things. Oh, gosh, Adam. About seven months later, I'm oh just gosh. driving, and it just dawns on me that I never took care of that. Oh my gosh! So I call up um, Die, and I tell her we got to go to we got to go to court, and we and so uh, we're going to go on that Monday. Like we're just going to show up. Yeah. And and so I take the day off work. I tell no one. Right. Because I knew I was. I don't know if people wouldn't like it or whatever. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of embarrassed. Yeah. And I go and I'm standing in front of the judge and it's a different judge. Mm. He is not as friendly not as, as the nice. previous judge. And I just tell him the story and he goes, all right, bailiff. And I said, I'm sorry, what's happening right now? And he said, you're going to jail. He said, we've got a bench warrant out for your arrest since you didn't show up. Oh my gosh. So just right there in front of my brand new wife, <laughs> our new life together, <laughs> put me in cuffs and they throw me in jail. Oh my God. So I, um, I'm in this holding cell for a long time, just by myself until eventually the cop comes back and he's going to take me to, uh, the real jail and, and it's outside and I'm in cuffs and like ankle cuffs or whatever. And so I got to walk outside now and I, I'm so embarrassed Oh my gosh. because like I'm a prison, I am literally a prisoner Wow. and it's my own fault. And so I go in there and they take my mug shot and I'm standing there, and right before they take me into the cell with everybody else, and I have to put on like the orange suit, mm-hmm. this guy, this random guy, comes up to me. He goes, "Hey, you're coming with me." He he bails me out. Apparently, uh, when Diana walked out of the courtroom with us having no plan on how to get me out, this bailiff comes up to, or I guess he wouldn't be a bailiff, a bail bondsman mm-hmm. comes up to her and he goes, "Hey, this is a hot, it's like super illegal." what I'm doing, like approaching you, but I can tell that you guys have no idea what's going on. And so, um, I will, I'll pay his bail and you, you pay me 150 bucks and I'll put his bail up and then, um, and then I'll go get him out of the jail. And so that's what happened. And so I, I follow him out and I, and he takes me to the car where Di's waiting on me and, uh, she's unhappy with me (laughs) to say the least. And my end of that story is just that, like, instead of getting away free, I ended up having to pay three thousand oh dollars, which totally sucked. Our first year of marriage because we had no money, but you had to pay three thousand. I did three thousand dollars. That's yeah. At that time of your life too, where it's oh, like, I would hate it now, but yeah, right, yeah. I mean, we yeah. had we lived. This is not a lie. We lived off of uh, seventeen dollars and fifty cents a week as our meal budget. Your meal budget. $70 a month. That's what we had for food mm. because I was working full time. Uh, Di was in an internship that she had to pay for mm-hmm. and I didn't make that much money. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's what was happening. Amazing. Somehow we made it. I don't, we, made never, it we did not get in debt. I don't know how that wasn't supposed to be the end of the story, but that's the most embarrassing wow. experience. What was, what was the most embarrassing moment where you're saying like walking out that was seeing your wife? No, or, or having the 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 cuffs, the and cuffs all that and kind being of stuff. outside. It's fascinating how like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, just the process of being put in cuffs. It's like emasculating is not the right word, but like, 
in some ways it's kind of dehumanizing in a way. Like it feels like, um, Oh, Oh, I felt oh, you know, I, like, like, I oh, don't yeah. think we think about that when we see people no. in cuffs or something like yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, I, like, I, I, I kind of forgot too, but like until it's you, until yeah. you're the one in cuffs going like, Oh my gosh. Like there was a girl that I knew that uh, was a friend of mine that talked about how she kind of had a similar story where she had all these parking tickets or oh, something yeah, yeah. and then yeah. ended up forgetting about it. And then they like mm -hmm. booked her and took her through all the stuff. And she's just like going, it was the weirdest feeling because no one was for her. Oh, like, oh, that's true. That's true. Like, like for the first yeah. time in her life, she had no one to just be like, Hey, yeah. you guys know me. This is not like, right. This wasn't on purpose. Yeah. This is a mistake, whatever. Yeah. And like no one cares. Like no one's listening. Yep. And it's just like, you're at the mercy of yeah. just the process. Well, the first time I went to jail for taking the knife into the airport, I remember uh, I was sitting in, in like the main holding room which was where you did your mug shot. It's a pretty big room. I had televisions and phones in and stuff. There was a there was a desk with cops there. Mm. And I at some point just had a question, just maybe about like what's what like I was just had been waiting for hours. Yeah, right. And I was just wanted to know what was gonna happen next. Yeah. And I remember walking up to the lady cop and she said, uh, I was just like, I just wanted to find out. And she just goes, We'll call, we'll call you. Like just very dismissive. Yeah, sure. And I didn't have any authority to be like, okay, hold on, wait a second. Like, yeah. In you know what I mean? Like yeah. in another situation, it was like I have a right here to know. I didn't really have a right to know. Yeah, yeah. And plus, I did my thing accidentally. Yeah. Everybody else that's there, like they committed a crime fairly purposely. Yeah, sure. And so she's dealing with everybody. Yeah, and it's not a great environment but everybody there i'm sure is acting like they did everything on, oh yeah an accident or right you know, like sure. so there's just no there's just no trust that right exactly. from which to work from yeah which, how often are you in situations like like i can't think i'm never in those kinds of no. situations i'm no. never in a situation where i don't have somebody i could call right it's like hey can you hear me out this is what's going on right yeah your, yeah that sounds crazy yeah so embarrassing moments yeah I can't really think of, did you ever have like a, did you ever have like a, I've never been like, like embarrassing moments. I think when I was, a, when I was a kid, the ones I'd hear about were just like pants down. Yeah. Or yeah. just like, like one to, yeah, just like, I, that. Well, what was embarrassing real. to you as a kid? I remember being deathly afraid that, that I was going to get de when I yes. went to a new school in the seventh grade. Yeah. And like somebody said like, oh, you're going to that school? Oh Yeah. It depends a lot of people over there. <laughs> Wait, it was like hot news in the neighborhood. <laughs> that was that was the school was known for. Known for. Are you going to that square? A lot of people get to pants over there. Do you have a, an it embarrassing story, out. Gary? Like you ever been embarrassed? Never. 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 He's, he, this is a guy who like wears a speedo to his birthday party. Or is that true? Did you do that? Yeah. I don't. I guess I wasn't. Well, oh, I mean, thanks. I, guess wasn't invited to that one. Oh yes. Not like my kids party. Yeah. <laughs> right. Should have should have clarified that. Right. I don't know what it is about like my um oh what do they call it? Like the way that you're raised, uh nurture. Oh I don't yeah. know what it is about my nurture growing up, but I've been in some we situations where I should have been embarrassed. Yeah. Like yeah. I went with Gary and his wife Ginger and then and, and my wife. We went camping. Yeah. And they leading up like we were gonna we were gonna it was the first time I ever went camping. Yeah, we were gonna summit a fourteen thousand footer f yeah, feeder fourteen fourteen yeah mountain, which blows my mind. But yeah. go ahead. Proceed. They they did P ninety X yeah in preparation. Yeah, I did nothing. Nothing. I did zero. <laughs> I did zero. Nothing. And just expected to. Just I don't know. Roll I was just like, and just it'll, it'll be, be fine. It'll, it'll be work fine. out. That's what I thought. It'll be fine. Yeah going for a walk yeah yeah i it was so hard yeah the six hour hike up just to get to our camp just to get to the base camp i kept those guys like yeah so i we were going so slowly i was so far behind mm -hmm. at one point i had to give my pack to my wife because she was, was stronger stronger than i am yeah and i should have been embarrassed <laughs> i should have been embarrassed would you say that? I shouldn't have let you come. Yeah, and honestly. That's amazing you'd say that because you know what I was thinking the whole time? 
yeah, these guys are idiots for letting me come. Amazing. That's what it I was felt. Their fault. It was their for fault. For me, it was their fault. We Amazing. Just trusted, you know, Adam's maybe not doing P90X. He's doing something. He's doing sure something. Surely he's not going to try to just. <laughs> surely he loves us enough to not. He's at least going for a walk. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. So, I, and I don't think that's a pro, an appropriate way to think. Yeah. I should have. I think the appropriate thing to do would have been to be embarrassed. Yeah. I think I'm really afraid of being embarrassed. So like I have to constantly push myself to try things that there might oh, be the yeah. potential of becoming embarrassed. You did the Steven Stevens thing at, yeah. the, at the concert. I did. I went I went to um, a Michael Bublé concert as a character, as Steven Stevens. Pretty effeminate character. It was just, you know, it's... it's I, in social settings and in, in crowds, like I, I'm totally fine to just blend in the crowd. I, I'm much more comfortable just kind of fitting in. And so to kind of put on these ridiculous clothes and just kind of walk around knowing that everybody just thinks I'm a real person was really funny to me. Mm-hmm. A, so that's why I did it. I just thought, oh, this is just funny and fun. Um, but it was really uncomfortable at first, especially after I kind of warmed up a little bit. It was it was better, but. Just feeling everybody like looking at you weird oh, yeah. and all of that and and not knowing how the night was going to go. It just felt kind of stupid. Mm-hmm. Um, spent a lot of money on the ticket. And so you're just like, am I just being well, like, is this? So I was kind of afraid of that. I was, that I was going to be embarrassed and 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 no one understanding what I'm doing, you know, so it, there was a lot of at risk in, in mm-hmm. for me anyways. And uh and it all ended up working out great and ended up Buble noticed me and we It was a great reward. It was a cra- it was crazy. It was great. Yeah. And the videos we we made out of the out of that experience was really fun and I'm proud of those videos and stuff. So it turned out great, but I was definitely afraid of being embarrassed. And I, I would say I was kind of embarrassed a little bit. Yeah, even though it just had to push through it. Yeah. 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 I, I think I get I, I do think I get embarrassed and maybe don't show it as much. Well, I get embarrassed whenever I am confident of something and find out that I'm wrong. Oh, yeah. I don't really love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and I think because of it, I'm always like looking at what the rules are, mm. you know, like, uh, like I always think about this. Uh, so <laughs> this, is a, this is a nerdy thing, but like when I fly, uh, you go in, in, in group numbers. Mm. And so I, I always want to get on the plane early. I know a lot of people don't think they, they don't like that. But mm. I want to get on the plane early because if you don't get on early enough, you can't put your bag on the plane. Oh, sure. And then it, it's just kind of a nightmare getting your bag. And so yeah, um, it, people, every time I hear somebody go, we're all going to the same place, people. I think, yeah, but I'm going to have my stuff with me when I get there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, but I always look at my group number and like I'm deathly afraid of like going a little too early. Like maybe I'm in group three and they call group two and yeah, I wasn't paying kind attention. of cutting in line. And then she goes, I'm sorry, this isn't you. Like, yeah, yeah that yeah, to yeah. me would be embarrassing. Yeah. And the siren goes off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sir. Right. Sir, what are you doing? <laughs> sir, is there a battery this in that bag? This guy's trying to. Back, there's a battery in that bag. This oh. guy's trying to cut. <laughs> yeah, I guess with the battery thing, I'm just like. I, I think if I think it's stupid, if oh, I we think we're going to ro- cut that story, I'm sorry. I'm referencing a story that we talked about. Oh, yeah, that's true. We should probably sorry, shouldn't talk about it. Sorry. Yeah. I'm Meep. edit point. Edit point. Yeah. If I, I think some embarrassing story now, Chris, this story it just just yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. Idiot. Why this, did I say that? So so speaking of airlines the uh, I, I um, this is an embarrassing story. I'm on a plane the other day and we are in the air. Mm -hmm. Um, I am a big rule follower. As long as I understand, that's a good rule. The caveat, I know you're looking at me like, you're not. As long as you understand that it's a good rule. As long as I understand, that is a good rule. Okay, I see If I think the rule is stupid, I'm just like, no. Yeah. It doesn't apply to me. It doesn't apply to me. Yeah. It's not appropriate. Um, So a rule that I think is really important is uh, don't make phone calls while, mm. while you're like in the air on the plane. While you're flying. That's yeah. their rule. Yeah. It's the uh, F- FAA. Yeah. FAA. Air Regulation. Air, what'd you say? Airplane mode. I don't go airplane mode because it cu- it kind of cuts off or whatever. And I just use the Wi-Fi. But like I, I'm just like, I'm not going to call someone when I'm in the air. That would be silly. Okay. They tell you not to do that. Yeah. I look and there's this guy. He's FaceTiming his buddy. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, idiot. <laughs> 
what is this guy doing? So I grab, I get the flight attendant. I go, hey, I'm, this guy over here is FaceTiming, FaceTiming his friend. Mom. Told on the guy? I told on the guy. Mom. That's exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sir. Yeah. yeah. So he goes over and goes, sir, you can't do that. And like takes him a while to get the guy to stop. And like guy shuts it down. And the flight attendant comes over to me and goes, uh, thank you so much. And I was like, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Proud that I did that. Yeah. Diana, so embarrassed that I told on that guy. Yeah. So I'm like. Was Diana there with you? Di was sitting next to me. She was next to yeah, me. Okay, yeah. 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 So I'm like, no, this is a rule. Yeah, this is you can't a rule. do this. So I'm thinking, this is ridiculous that Di is embarrassed. Yeah. Right. I can't believe like she's the one person that would disagree with what I did. So I start polling all my friends. Yeah. Nobody's on my side. Yeah. Everyone says I would not have done that. Yeah. Yeah. Including you. Including me. Yes. I just, I don't know that that's the right, that, that what I'm saying is right. Sure. But I just, if I was in that situation, I would not have said that. Gary. And maybe that just speaks to my lack of self-confidence to like stand up for what's right. But I was like, yeah, I wouldn't have. I guess I, you talked about rules that actually are, you see the purpose for. Yeah. That would be one that I'm kind of like, I don't, you don't see it. I mean, we're watching movies on our, on the video screen in front of our faces that we have to pay for. Well, but this guy can't. Well, hold on. Stan, hold on. How you don't have is to the pay. last plane you flew 1987, on in 1992? 1987. Yeah, no one screen dropped down in the front, and they brought it. They wheeled a projector out. <laughs> okay, for one, we're not paying Little for those bumpy. anymore. Yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> you can pay for Wi-Fi though. Yeah, you have to pay for what? Well, that's what I mean. Yeah, you do have to. Well, well, but you, but you can watch a, you can watch you a can show watch for free. Okay. Like that part of the Wi-Fi you can jump on. Yeah. But like I did research and I don't know if this, I don't, you know, I don't know how accurate this is, but it said that there's an antenna that hangs on the bottom of the plane. Yeah. All of the signals are coming to and from that. Yeah. And, you know, so the article I read said, yeah, one person on their phone is not going to mess it up. But if everybody gets on their phone, it's going to be an issue. Yeah. There was just one person on their phone. (laughs) (laughs) Right? Fair. Fair point. (laughs) Fair point. <laughs> yeah. No, that's funny. Yeah. Um, did, who wrote that article? Um, probably the guy who was on his phone. Probably. <laughs> probably United Airlines. Mm. <clears throat> so they're creating. They're they're they mm. are shaping the narrative. I don't know. What, what? You're a conspiracy <laughs> theorist. That's what. That's where this has gone. Conspiracy <laughs> theories. I'm just teasing. Yeah. And uh, would you have told on him, Gear? No. What is wrong with you guys? Socially inappropriate, socially inconsiderate. Socially uh, inconsiderate. Yeah, if I'm sitting next to the guy, that feels that. What honestly. about just the fact? Okay, like, take away the 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 breaking the rule. Yeah, it's loud. No, that now that I could. Yeah, that's annoying. Yeah, that's, but you're still like no, you wouldn't say anything. No, I mean it's like on a coffee shop and somebody's FaceTiming. That's annoying as well, but it's not. It's rude, but I don't know that it's so rude that it would necessitate like, hey, we got to shut this down. Okay. I'm not, this, this change it, I change it not. Did you, what I feel. Was it personally bothering you? Like to the point, like you can hear what he's saying it and made it's me annoying. Feel, it and, made my, it made like my skin crawl. Yeah. The, the both. It's loud. Yeah. And that's a rule. Yeah. That I that believe we're all in. on board with. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And I just think this is ret- <laughs> that's just how I felt. What? What world are you living in that you think it would be okay to FaceTime someone from a plane? Yeah. That's how I feel. <laughs> this is over the top. This is the same as if somebody brings like a hamburger on the plane and is yeah. eating it. It's annoying, but at least it's not breaking the rule, like, or whatever. Yeah, I guess there's so no. They lift the, the ban. <laughs> a phone now, call. Yeah. FaceTime on planes, you're going to be like, you're going to be doing it. I guess I, <laughs> I guess you might be right. I might be like, I might be like, oh, this is annoying, but. Cut to, what's up, Di? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, a low, Lone Ranger on this one. No. All right. Uh, yeah. Time to move on to the last segment. Comments of the week. Comments of the week. Did you get any doozies this I guess, week? Dude, I got some doozies. Okay. So I had a video 
if you want to follow me on social media, you can uh, you can follow at Hey Adam Bush uh, on all of them. I uh, posted a video on YouTube last week. Okay, and it did. It got f- about forty five thousand views, and. Part of the reason I probably got all those views is because I got a lot of comments. Yeah. So I started, I tried to do this, which I don't know, I don't know if I told you guys this. I tell so many stories mm-hmm. in my sets that I, there's sometimes like, man, I wish I could post this, but it's like, it's not a minute long. Yeah. yeah. Like it's like three or four minutes long. So I was like, I'm just going to try. So on YouTube Shorts, I broke, I, it was actually the camping story about mm. me going camping with Gary. I broke it up into five parts. Mm-hmm. Part four. <laughs> <laughs> just went crazy and uh it doesn't make a lot of sense yeah. out of context yeah and that was some of the comments but um but i'm i am just amazed at what's what some people said all right i'm just going to read you a couple because they're ca- kind of all in the same uh uh vein well i'll just read you one this is amazing uh the pretentious illiterate that's their oh, name. That's the, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what they Pretentious said. Pretentious. So they're okay. So they're a little bit of they're self-aware. self-aware they're at least. a little self-aware. Yeah. Said this. Nobody loves this guy enough to tell him he doesn't belong on stage. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry that you got that message. But he does. <laughs> so he loves me. I didn't think about that. Yeah. That's. I guess that's true. That's he's, a good point. He's uh, sharing. He's expressing his love to you. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see if I can. Uh, oh my gosh! Did this you is. Respond to him. I did respond or to him. Her? Yeah, I did respond. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's Garrett girl. I did respond. I here's the deal, and you can you guys tell me what you think about this. I I don't I don't want to add to the hate. Yeah, like that's such a hateful comment. I mean, yeah. Wait, you don't think it is? Well, no, it is. I mean, at, at its core, it's from their perspective. It's a from their perspective, they're saying you know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean it is. It is very. It is a painful, hurtful way of saying. I don't think this person is a very good performer. What and what does this guy think? Like, yeah, is just, this going to help me? Oh, yeah. that guy. Yeah, the pretentious illiterate. That's. A it's. I think. Fair it, point. It's a little bit of an arrogance as if to say I see things that the other people don't see. I guess so. I yeah. guess so. It's yeah. a little pretentious. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm. Not, I'm not looking to add to the hate. Yeah. Right. No, I get it. Yeah. So I said to him, "I'm thankful for your concern." <laughs> I oh I wrote something pretty long. Uh, I'm thankful for your concern. I have been so blessed with a wonderful community of friends here in Tulsa who have been honest and supportive over the last four years. If not for them, I would I wouldn't have been able to find this special, nor quit my job to make a living at writing a comedy, nor film a dry bar special coming out 2023. So a little yeah, a little bit of a, <laughs> a flex there. I guess I was a, bit, a little flex. Uh, I can see where you're coming from, though. You don't love my stuff, and that's totally cool. There are so oh many gosh. amazing comedians who just aren't my jam, but I'm still excited for all of them as they follow their passions and what they're good at. I pray you have wonderful friends as well who love to cheer you on in your talents, and I hope your weekend ends amazing. Much love to you from Tulsa. Wow. The, the sad thing is they can't even read that. Because <laughs> yeah. he's illiterate. Yeah. Yeah. That is sad. Maybe you should have thought of a better way to communicate with him since he's illiterate. That's a good point. Yeah, I should have made a video. They responded. Oh, they did? Yeah. There wasn't even a joke in this clip. That's what they wrote. Yeah. And then he wrote, wait, I listened again. And then he put in quotations, your wife. I get it now. It took me a little bit to honestly okay. figure out what, what he's saying. What is he saying? I just mentioned my, my wife. So you like being just, married is a joke? Me being married is a joke. Yeah. How ridiculous that I would be married. Yeah. So he is not backing down on the... This is so fascinating to me. Which part? Oh, just the in the face of kindness, he, just, this person would continue to like... Kind of a backhanded kindness. I guess that's true. Kindness. You were, I mean, you I was, were a little prickly. Is, what's funny is before I read that, I was like, I, I remember being really kind. And then I'm reading it now. I was like, Adam, you're being kind of a jerk. Yeah, I guess. I, I didn't mean it to be like that. Yeah, you're basically saying, what do you know? But... I guess I was. Yeah. So I guess I was a little hurt. And it kind of came through. So then I said, uh, I said, totally, uh, 
It's something new I tried, breaking up a longer story for YouTube. It seemed to work pretty well. I do love comedy, but I also love storytelling, so I'm a fan of clips, even if they don't have a joke. Yeah. And then he said, bro, lighten up. <laughs> I was like, oh, I didn't. I thought it was. Oh, we're joking. This I, is all a joke. I don't know. I thought, yeah, I guess. Yeah. What are what are videos that he's posted that you could make insulting comments on and then tell him to lighten up Wait, after you've... What are you saying? I'm saying uh, whatever this person's name is. The pretentious illiterate. The pretentious illiterate. What videos have they posted? No videos. The, right. 100% of the any negative comments I get, no videos. So then you can just say, well, when you post a video, I'll go on there and make a hurtful comment. <laughs> And then tell you to lighten up about when it. you make a video about reading. When you put yourself out there, yeah, I want to say that, but it does no, not. No, it's yeah. not. It's pointless. Yeah, it's pointless. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And so here, I'll just read you this other comment that is actually pretty good. Um, is, that, is that gaslighting? Is that what that person's doing to tell you to lighten up after they've just oh, insulted I guess it, you? Yeah, I think that is gaslighting. That be considered gaslighting? I think is that right? Yeah. Yeah, and you're saying. Yeah, basically like turning it on you. Like, yeah, whoa, like, whoa. I mean, I insulted you, and then you're trying to explain. Yeah. But, bro, I'm joking around, lighten up. Right. He's like, oh. Like, oh, that's Adam, a you that's... should probably report him to the flight attendant. <laughs> <laughs> you need to tell somebody. Look at that. He's a closer. He's, he's a closer. A, he's a closer <laughs> on a story. Pretentious illiterate. Pretentious illiterate. Sorry that I couldn't live up to your standards. <laughs> You don't have to watch my videos. <laughs> well, but, he but just thanks for helping him. that one get. He's looking out for everyone else. He's looking out for everybody else, and yep. that's what he does. He doesn't offer his material to be judged. No, he just judges everybody else's material. Yeah, What's and I saying? think we need more of that in the world, <laughs> right? I think that's the goal here. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, it's good. This uh, podcast episode really took a dark turn here. You know, just real sad. No, I'm not sad. I'm. I'm. I feel Th wonderful. Thoughtful. Yeah, thoughtful. Yeah, you know, I like that. I, you know, I'm not always funny all the time. <laughs> I'm more than just a punchline. You You're know? more than a funny clown that dances yeah. for a 12-year-old. That's right. Is way, that from this? Way more than that. Yeah. Way more than I'm not just a clown. All right. Well, but, that's the end of our podcast. Was I going to get to share a, <laughs> a, a, a comment or... I just forgot. <laughs> I'm sorry. The last one we only did one. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know you had one. I'm no, sorry. No. <laughs> yeah. Did you have one? I'm totally kidding. I really, I have, I don't have them in front of me. So, so you're not going to say, because I don't have TikTok on my phone. Oh, no, Wait. Do you have a positive comment? Though? I do have, I, all my, I feel like the majority of mine are positive. Oh, do you want to rub it in? Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it feels weird now to just be like, well, no, let's I got hear a it. really positive one. Let's hear it. I mean, there's all kinds of, they're, they're just very positive that make me feel really good. I, You know what you're saying right now? <laughs> Sorry. I just was saying, oh man, I got a lot of negative comments on this <laughs> I know. one. Um, and then you're like, oh man, that's crazy. I got so many positives. I know. Do you want? I have had, you've stopped us. Do you want to share? I'm sorry. Now this is all just blowing up in my face. Nope. Yeah, let's let's hear it. Um, Maybe. the, po the pos positive ones aren't as, aren't funny. Like they're just nice. Then why did you just say I was making a joke? Oh, well, because I, I could tell you forgot to ask me if I had. I one. did forget. You know what? I'm gonna look because I do have TikTok on my okay, phone. Okay, look up my comments. All right. Look up my comments. I'll see. I'm going to find one. Oh, it's going to hurt you. Uh, all right. Let's see here. I hope I get a comment we are. on the podcast. That says, Someone comment that on. Guy's <laughs> mic. You that guy's mic. Someone comment on this podcast about Gary so that Gary can participate in the <coughs> comment of the week. Oh, I would love that. <laughs> Look at this video. Uh, uh, 12, 12, this video, did, your last video, your dancing video did so well. You, it's hard to see, you got. I even saw that and I'm not on social media. You did, oh. 96,000 views. That's really oh, That's good. actually pretty low. Oh my God. I'm not trying to, uh, I'm oh, just being good honest. Night. That's actually not, I was actually kind of disappointed. Just illiterate is actually yeah. Chris. Jeez. Jeez. I am very thankful for the amount of views it has. But you said it like, oh, it did really well. On tic, that's on TikTok? 
I would yeah, say that's on TikTok. For for Stephen videos, I I should be in the hundred fifty to three hundred range. You're getting there. You just posted it yesterday, didn't you? Tuesday. No, it was on Tuesday. Okay, all right. I'm yeah, this, this. I am li- I am going through twelve hundred comments. I cannot find a freaking <laughs> negative comment. Well, what what do they say? Time to take dancing lessons. Please wait for me, Stephen. Yeah. This is videos of you dancing. <laughs> uh, that dancing is perfect. Great vocals. They say you're singing poorly in this, and they're saying good job. No, that's sarcastic. Um, this made my morning. <laughs> Omg. Um, I was going, I, I, I'm going through these mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, good. Here's a negative one. And it says the problem with this one is you're a bit too cute. <laughs> <laughs> to pull off that character. Is that what yeah. you're saying? Yeah. Um, so I, I, someone duetted me. Okay. Uh, and sometimes the duets can be a little, a little strange. Yeah. Uh, just the nature of the character. Women, yeah, there haven't been anything that's been you know too overtly sexual. There was a lady who was in a in bed, <laughs> an, an older woman who yeah. um, was in bed with like a. I don't know why I said like oh, a, oh, yeah. like that. <laughs> an older lady, an old woman, yeah, <laughs> yeah. She's on TikTok. Yeah. Well, it's you know it's a, that's a growing demographic. Uh, actually, that's true. The, okay. the is older generation liking is liking your stuff or saying TikTok. I well, no, I mean it, TikTok in general is oh, okay. is like is growing exponentially, and, oh, okay. and like older people are starting Thanks to get more to connected you. to it. Well, I don't know about that. Wow. Uh, this episode is going to be called "Chris is Great." Uh, uh, anyways, so there's been some weird ones of these. So this one, this lady, it wasn't even so much what she did; it was that what her. The caption on her video said, of her duet, the caption said, future Mrs. Munch. Oh, your real name. And Ooh, so I, t- uh, I was like, hey, Lisa, look at the- like You're not going to like this. <laughs> oh, man. That's the first time anybody's ever said that. And she she was doing it in characters. I don't even know why she, she may have just gotten confused and thought like, the character's name Why was wasn't it? Stephen future. Munch or something. I don't know. Oh, man. And it was just, she was being silly. It wasn't like, it wasn't a big deal, but I just thought it was funny that it was like, oh, Lisa's going to love, love that. Yeah. That it said Mrs. Munch. Yeah. Well, There's usually a pretty clear definitive line I between mean, it's the just, character and I think it's healthy to know that you've got options. Yeah. <laughs> if this one doesn't work out, what's it been? No. 18 years? 18, it'll be, no, it's 19, it'll be 20 years in January. Is that for real? That's for real. Are you going to do something big? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I mean, come on. You know me, right? When it comes to traveling, plans, talk about it. planning, yeah. I'm going to talk a big game. Do you the, need me year. to plan I might your need, anniversary? I might need some help. We do balance each other out. I might need some help of just like, I I've had thoughts rolling around. I was like, oh, we should do this or we should do that. Yes. It's hard for me to actually like, yeah, make that happen. Yeah. You know what you should do? Something. I really want to do something. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like if I don't help, this is where it's going to stop. It might. Lisa doesn't say like, hey, let's go do it. It's a big one. It's 20. I think I would actually be the one pushing more. She's in, she's more conservative when okay. it comes to spending money on trips and that I mean, kind of stuff. That's admirable. She would love it. She, she would love a trip. But she probably would feel guilty about like pushing for some big thing or something like yeah. that. Yeah. We're th- we're this uh, on the other end. It's this is we're about to hit twelve, yeah. Next week, and uh, oh, it's in five days. Actually, Ooh. it's a good thing you said that out loud. Um, and I'm thinking New Zealand. Oh my gosh! Yeah, wanted to go there on the ten, but it was closed because of COVID. Oh sure, yeah. Well, in yeah. five days, you want to go to New Zealand? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean like I'm saying the like I wouldn't go in October anyway because it would be a little too cold. Oh, and you love Australia as well. Right? I love Australia. I'm yeah. getting so many comments and messages from people in Australia. And I would use that as an excuse to go. Oh, well, that's not, I, just, I, I made a friend. need to go. I made a friend. A guy oh, that's reached right. out to me. Hi, Josh. Hey, Josh. If you're watching. Yeah. Uh, he reached out to me. Super cool guy who used to work at a church and is now doing comedy. And, well, there you go. Yeah. So anyways. Yeah. yeah big time. Sorry. 
I don't yeah. know why I'm talking about that. I just thought it was interesting. I don't yeah. know what it is about my stuff that yeah. the uh, Australians seem to What enjoy. did you do last year for your anniversary? Um, Probably nothing. Just period. Probably went out to dinner. You did go. Where did you go? Oh, we probably went to Stonehorse. Okay. I mean, that's a... Yeah, it's our, it's our, I mean, well, I mean, it's our, our, it's our regular date night restaurant, so it's not that special. Yeah. I need help, guys. Help me to think well, bigger. All right. Tell you what, maybe if we can remember just give us the budget. next episode, where, yeah. what should Chris, yeah, just, yeah, give we'll just budget. plan it. We'll tell you when to get there. We'll make sure your bag doesn't have the lithium battery in it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Anything else? I think that's it. Yep. All right. Well, um, if you want to connect with us, follow us on social media, Chris Much Comedy, order a cameo from any of his characters. Yep. And um, I think by the time this comes out, I will have already filmed my new special, which is called Who Brought the Kid? And just means that uh, it'll be out pretty soon. Yeah. And in the meantime, you can check out uh, my last one, A Night of Storytelling and Comedy. It's on YouTube. And you can watch it for free. Cool. Cool. Adam Bush, Chris Munch, Gary Hornstein. Love, Love you. Love you guys. Bye.